Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lara or Lara Likes Mascara. My channel is all focused around conscious makeup consumption. So really owning a collection that works for you, getting full use out of all your makeup products and also trying not to bring too many new things in for a whole variety of reasons. And I have been on this journey for quite a few years now. And along the way, I have discovered many tips and tricks to curating a makeup collection that you love and that works for you and figuring out what you don't need to keep and how many products is the right number of products to have in your own makeup collection. And of course, this is different for every person, but I'm finally getting to a place where I feel like I know what works for me. I'm not there yet. This is a very long journey, but I'm getting closer. So today's video is going to be all about makeup no buys and my tips and tricks around them. Basically how to have fun on a makeup no buy. I have been on a no buy on and off for many years now. I am currently on one and I was on one for about six months of last year. I think it's probably gonna be about the same this year. Now I did just purchase a makeup product three days ago, but that's because I'm running out of my final concealer and so I needed a new one. One of my goals is to help other people go on makeup no buys, really to realize that they should go on a makeup no buy because if you had told me this a few years ago, well, maybe more than a few, maybe like six years ago, you just, it would have been very hard to convince me because I loved bringing new stuff into my life. I never finished any products. Like that was just not something I did. I would just bring new things all the time. And so I've never finished my older products. So I didn't realize that I had essentially a makeup addiction or like a makeup hoarding problem. I thought this was just how it worked. Like you just, you amass as large a makeup collection as possible. I really thought that was the goal. Now my goal is the exact opposite. I want my makeup collection to be as small as possible while still serving me as best it can and owning products that I love and you know having a lot of creativity within that and feeling like I can do a lot of different looks and be very just be creative. So I know that makeup no buys are challenging or, or daunting to some people because they're like oh I couldn't I couldn't do that I couldn't stop buying makeup or because they feel like it wouldn't be a good time. It would be like what's the point with makeup if you can't keep track of new launches and pick out the products that you want the most and then purchase them at the Sephora sale or as a little treat when you had a bad day, then like makeup's not fun if there's no new products. And so I really had to turn my mind around and realize that no, actually makeup itself is fun. Everything about makeup is fun, not just the bringing new things and trying out fun new products. That's not the only thing that's fun about makeup doing your makeup is fun, getting creative, trying different types of looks and trying products in ways other than how they were intended. There's so much about makeup that's fun. And I want to show you that a makeup no buy can be fun. You can still have a great time with your makeup, even if you are not constantly buying new things. So let's talk about my best tips to have fun on a makeup no buy or how to enjoy yourself so that you will actually stick to that makeup no buy and not slip up and go purchase something. I've done similar videos to this before, but it is 2024 and I figured it was time for a new one, a refresher. So my first tip is to start some makeup projects. I will always recommend project panning to people. This is how I got into this particular community. Project panning just means panning or using up your products. Hitting pan means hitting the bottom of a product. So for example, this blush, I've hit pan there you can see. And that is one of the best ways to use up your products by making it a game, gamifying it and creating a project pan. So selecting a bunch of products that you tell yourself you should focus on these products and try to use them up within a certain amount of time. So I document this on YouTube. You certainly don't have to, but you know, if you wanted to take pictures for yourself so you can track the progress or whatever, I recommend doing that even just for yourself so you can see the progress that you are making. So project pan is like the mainstream option, but there's so many other types of projects you can do. I beg your pardon. There's so many other projects you can do. Right now I am doing a blush roulette, which is not 
panning exactly, but it is me trying to get use out of all my projects. I will link that series here. Basically, I have a lot of blushes that I never reach for. And so I am taking one month per blush to actually focus on it and get to know it better. So for example, this is the blush that I will be using in the month of May. And I'm gonna try to get as much use as I can out of it because I never reach for this blush. Same with this palette I just showed, I never reach for it. And so having it in this project, in this blush roulette, forces me to use these products that I do like and enjoy, but I just don't organically reach for them. So this is a fun way to really get more use out of your products, get to know your collection better and keep it interesting and still be working towards goals and having like satisfying <laughs> events or occurrences in your makeup life. Because sure, it's, it's fun and satisfying to open a new makeup product, but it's also fun and satisfying to finish something. To completely pan this blush would be a very impressive and that would be extremely satisfying. So project panning is very satisfying in and of itself. And so I recommend doing products like that. Graveyard project pan, where you focus exclusively on products that are a lot older in your collection. Lipstick project pan, where you're focusing exclusively on lip products. This is one that I am trying to pan this year, this Tower 28 lip gloss. There's, there's so many options. It, doesn't have to be just about using things up. You can do a project where you do a fun lipstick every day of the week, do a different color, Monday's red lipstick, Tuesday's black lipstick. You know what I mean? Like just play around and do things so that you're still having fun in your makeup collection and challenging yourself and realizing that you have a lot of makeup already. <laughs> My second tip is more specific to people who are going on a makeup no buy for financial reasons. If you realize that you're just spending way too much money on makeup and <laughs> that's not great, it's making you feel kind of icky or you feel like you should be putting your money elsewhere. And that tip is to have makeup swaps with your friends. Of course, this assumes that you have friends who are into makeup, but I don't really have friends who are into makeup, but I do have friends who wear makeup. I feel like most of my friends wear at least a little bit of makeup. So it's fun to swap with them. I recently had a clothing swap and I included a caveat that people could bring stuff, like just random stuff that they're trying to get rid of. People brought like teas, wine glasses, and some makeup products. And this was very cool. Shauna actually came to this swap, my friend Shauna Rapari here on YouTube, and she got some makeup products out of it, which is, Amazing. This is such a cool way to bring makeup products into your collection without actually purchasing them. Again, if that is one of your worries. This is also a great way for you to declutter your collection if you're trying to do that. Like you don't even need to take anything away from the makeup swap, but just bring products that you want to declutter and your friends will be so pleased <laughs> to get these products that you no longer want. Especially if you're the one who loves makeup and they don't have as much makeup, they will be thrilled. So yes, highly recommend makeup swaps, clothing swaps, whatever. Do this sort of thing with your friends. Even if it's just like three people, if you're having a movie night or whatever, highly recommend. I have got some real gems from makeup swaps from friends. Another tip to make your makeup no buy fun also relates to friends and that is to do this with a friend. So if you're planning to start a makeup no buy at the beginning of January or beginning of new month or whatever, you are much more likely to stick to it if you are accountable to something or someone. So even if this is not like taking pictures of your project pan progress and posting it on Instagram or like just for yourself, if you just tell a friend that you are going on a makeup no buy and you get them to join with you, you are much more likely to stay accountable and to stick to it because there's like, there's stakes, you know, you told them that you were doing this. This is the case for like any kind of project or, or challenge that you go on. If you do it with another person, you are much more likely to stick to it because you're doing it together. You've got each other's backs. So, <laughs> find other people who are in this like headspace as well as you that will really help if all of your friends go makeup shopping all the time and take regular trips to sephora that's maybe not going to help your makeup no buy so find someone else who is like-minded the next tip has to do with creativity which i mentioned before and this has been great for me personally because i 
I've always loved makeup, but I didn't used to be very creative with it. It actually took me going on this conscious consumerism journey to get out of my comfort zone with makeup. Even something like this eyeshadow today, this like pink sparkly eyeshadow, which is fairly basic, like I'm just using one <laughs> color, is like kind of bold, right? Like I feel like most people would not wear a bold look like this. My makeup abilities and preferences I think have gotten a lot more interesting since going on this makeup no buy because I have constraints. I can't bring new products into my collection and so I want to be creative with what I do have, whether that means using lipstick as blush, using lip liner as eyeliner, trying out different eyeshadow looks and trying out all cream products and then all powder products. Like use what you have in your collection to your advantage. Try things out in different ways and really have fun with it. See what you can do with your collection. I am currently trying to wear red lipstick like on the daily just to the grocery store whatever I'm trying to like normalize that which is kind of getting me out of my comfort zone and it's definitely not something I would have done before but this just comes because I'm trying to use what I have I have a lot of red lipstick products so I I should use them I should try to have fun with that rather than instead going out and purchasing some nude lipsticks which is more in my comfort zone use what I have wear red lipstick why not and sort of along with this try out different styles different colors because I've had to focus on what I have rather than looking outside I've gotten to know the products that I do have much better and figured out my preferences so okay here are some of my preferences I only like warm eyeshadows I hate cool tones I think they look really really bad on me greens sometimes can be okay blues not good net blues are so bad on my eyes grays absolutely not silver no way those are the eyeshadow shades that I avoid but I love a pink an orange like an orangey brown but the brown has to be the right shade of brown can't be too dark these are just some of the things that I've realized because I've had to look internally at my collection. I also much prefer cream products now. I used to only prefer powder, like blushes and bronzers and all that. All of this has come about because of my makeup no buy. So really play around with your collection, try out different styles. Maybe you'll figure out something that you would not have figured out otherwise. A color preference or a type of makeup look the focus has shifted. It's no longer about bringing things in and looking at what's out there and the new products. So you can really take time to enjoy and discover your collection in ways that you hadn't been able to before because the focus was on things you did not have. One specific project that I recommend doing is the one month makeup bag. I did this once before intentionally. <laughs> I probably should do it again to be honest but I'm just having a lot of fun in my makeup life right now so I don't really want to constrain myself at the moment but I did this about two years ago so essentially what it is is you have your regular bag of makeup your daily makeup bag whatever you use and you keep that constant you keep that the same for an entire month so kind of like what I do with my blush roulette where I focus on one blush this is a bad example because there's two but all of the products that you use for that month remain the same. You can't swap out a blush, you can't swap out a mascara or an eyeshadow palette. You exclusively use those products. And what's great about this is obviously, yes, you get lots of use out of those products, especially if they are products that you are trying to pan. But when you finish that month, and you swap other new things in and you get to see the rest of your collection, it feels like, wow, I have so much makeup. I have so much variety. I have so many products. I had to focus on one blush, but now I get to use all five of my blushes or all 15 of my blushes or however many you have, 40, I don't know. When you get back the rest of your collection, it will feel like so much variety that you're like, why would I even need to go out and buy new products because I have so many. So, I know Chloe Marriott also did this on YouTube and she talked about what a breath of fresh air it was when she finally got the rest of her collection and it just felt like everything was new and exciting and so this kind of like psychologically is useful in, in getting your mind to see your collection as large and as fulsome. Another tip that I have is to plan your future purchases. 
So I'm assuming that this makeup no buy is not like a forever thing. You know, maybe it's six months, maybe it's a year, whatever it is. At some point, you're gonna go off that makeup no buy and you are going to purchase some products. Maybe they're just the products that you need, but maybe they're fun things too. And so I have really enjoyed planning out the products that I am going to buy when I finish my makeup no buy. The anticipation of those products, like the lead up, makes it so much more exciting when you finally purchase them. This is another psychological trick, like the one month makeup bag thing, where anticipation for something actually increases enjoyment of that thing itself, whether it's like going on vacation and, and getting excited for the trip or whatever it is. Like if you are excited about a thing, you actually enjoy that thing more. So plan your future purchases. There are a couple of things that I need. The Sephora sale is on currently as I'm filming this and I'm picking up a couple of things and I really had a good time like planning those items out, looking at different reviews and different videos and trying to figure out what's the best concealer for how much I wanna spend and cruelty-free brand that I enjoy. I, I really like looking at reviews and figuring out what I'm going to buy. And another benefit of this is that hopefully if you have a lot of lead up time to those purchases, they're gonna be well thought through purchases. They're not just gonna be spontaneous, last minute decisions, the things that you saw at the store and you're like, ooh, I'm gonna grab that. These are gonna be things that you planned. They're going to be conscious purchases. They're gonna be things that you probably enjoy and feel like a good use of money and that you actually are going to use because you know you need it or it's filling a gap in your collection or because you watch enough reviews, you know it's a good product. So hopefully no impulse purchases will happen if you plan out your purchases like this. A few days ago, I was going through Sephora's website and harding items that I want. So I have, you know, on my page things that maybe in the future I will purchase, not for this Sephora sale, perhaps some point in the future and I have a lot of time to think through those purchases and figure out if they do make sense or not. I would recommend not going overboard on this though because there is a possibility that like spending all this time on Sephora's website and looking at different makeup products you would just be like so tempted to buy stuff so you know do it do what works for you but I have found this productive and fun <laughs> for me. And the final tip is maybe a little bit unorthodox. <laughs> And this probably doesn't apply to everyone, but it probably applies to some. And that is to find other hobbies. Us in the makeup community are so, we're so obsessed. We're so obsessed with makeup and like for good reason. I love it. Like I have such a fun time watching my favorite YouTubers and putting on makeup is often like my favorite part of the day. I have such a great time. I love my makeup products. I just love having fun with makeup, but we are, we are so tuned in to every single launch and like even the vocabulary around makeup is so like advanced and specific and it feels like such a, such a niche, even like, like panning or different adjectives that you would use to describe different cream blushes or mascaras. Like it's just, it's a lot and it can easily take over your life. I think during COVID makeup became like a much bigger part of my life, which made sense because there wasn't as much to do. I wasn't super busy and I enjoyed it. I had more time to do makeup and to play around with makeup, but I think we can let it take too much space in our lives, physically and metaphorically. And we get so caught up in makeup that we get like overly obsessed. And when there's, you know, for example, a, a special launch of a product, like we need to have that. We need to go to the Sephora sale and restock on all of our favorites. We need to have these massive makeup collections. Obviously not everyone, but like, it's just, it's a lot. And it's not healthy to just have one interest, right? I'm not saying makeup lovers only love makeup, but like, if it is your main hobby, your main activity to play around with makeup and to go shopping, like I think it would be productive to explore what else is out there, particularly if you realize that you have an unhealthy relationship with makeup and shopping, you're spending too much money and your collection is getting too big and it's sort of out of hand. Maybe it's because you have this space in your life that you need to fill and you haven't figured out what else. Just keeping up with makeup 
is extremely time consuming. And maybe the issue and why we're so obsessive with makeup and keeping up with trends and everything is that like, we don't have other stuff to obsess about, to be interested in. I know recently like Shauna, Rebecca Morgan and Sarah Rose have all talked about other hobbies that they've gotten into lately. Shauna has gotten into art. Sarah Rose has talked about doing ballet classes. Rebecca Morgan, I'm just watching a video now and she was talking about other activities she's been doing while taking a step away from YouTube. And that's really healthy to have other interests and to have space outside. I don't want to demonize makeup as a hobby because it's obviously one of mine, but it shouldn't be your only hobby or your only interest because then ultimately what we're doing is like purchasing more and more stuff and that's not really benefiting anyone. So yeah, find other stuff that you love, still keep your love for makeup, but if you, if makeup is your only interest, like I think you need to explore other options. There's so much out there. Sort of a strange uh, thing to end on, but just a reminder. So that is it for today's video, but let's talk about a book that I've been reading lately. And I hope that all of these tips were helpful if you yourself are embarking on a makeup no buy or struggling to stick to it and enjoy it. Hopefully this helps. So the book that I've been reading is called The Unquiet Dead. I actually am not very far in. 70-ish pages. This is by Asma Zahanat Khan, who, okay, I thought was a Toronto writer, but I'm reading her Oscar bio and it says that she's a British born Canadian who lives in Denver, Colorado, but it takes place in Toronto. She also has a PhD in international human rights law. It's kind of funny because the last two books I've read have both been Toronto books. This mostly takes place in Scarborough by the Scarborough Bluffs. And the other book was very much like downtown Toronto, maybe maybe like St. Clair area actually. But that's, it's such a delight to like read about your city, you know, and unintentionally. This is about murder mystery kind of, but it takes place with like the police. So it centers on this guy, Esa Katak, who is the head of this police force that focuses, it's called community policing. And they work more with, I guess like hate crimes, attacks that are motivated, racially motivated. I think I, I haven't gotten that much into it. And it's kind of confusing so far, but basically this guy died by falling off the Scarborough Bluffs, but apparently that's not what actually happened. It seems like he was killed because of something. He was potentially a really bad guy who hid his identity. I don't want to give too much away because you don't find this out right away. I'm explaining this pretty badly, but I mean, it's good. It's just not really what I expected. And I find it kind of confusing. I, I'm finding the writing style a little bit difficult to like sink into. The characters are somewhat opaque. I also found the way that the characters acted just like very unrealistic. The the romance, I hated the way it was done. It was giving me flashbacks of like fourth wing, <laughs> just like very like YA and kind of cringy. But the, the actual case that the, the book is built around was very interesting. So I'm glad I read it. I don't think I will be continuing with this series. It did remind me of other mysteries I've read that have been done better. At its core, it was about a particular moment in history that I was completely ignorant of, which I am uh, not proud of. I don't want to give away what it's actually about because that is kind of a spoiler, but I'm glad I read it, but I won't be continuing with the series. Also, the ending was cut off, so thanks for watching. Bye.